Depending on which survey you read, genealogy is the second most popular hobby in America, next to gardening. More than ever, people are exploring their roots and ancestry through genealogical investigation. Now, that's one big reason the new Tennessee State Library and Archives is a treasure of historical discoveries. Plus, it's free and open to anyone with an interest in our state's bygone years. It was 21 years from dream to reality. A splendid 165,000 square foot, three-story building next door to the Bicentennial Mall. The Tennessee State Library and Archives is one of the most state-of-the-art facilities of its kind. For its overseer, Secretary of State Trey Hargett, it's a treasure for all of us in the state. We have incredible hopes and expectations because now not only are we able to preserve Tennessee's documents appropriately, we're now more than ever able to make them accessible to all Tennesseans. Your journey begins in the spacious lobby, a place where you could spend an hour exploring state history through all kinds of original documents. Copies of Tennessee's three constitutions, beginning in 1796, are on display. And you can enjoy giant touch screens that let you interactively view a myriad of records, censuses, manuscripts, and more. Now, this touch screen allows you to explore the lives of prominent Tennesseans throughout history, well, such as track star Wilma Rudolph, and of course, the one and only Dolly Parton. Here's a touch screen of state maps through the years. State librarian and archivist Chuck Sherrill demonstrates. Uh, choose an area. Let's say you know your family came from Cumberland County. So you'd see, well, here's Cumberland County in 1973, more or less a current map. And let's say your grandmother had told you that they came there sometime early before the Civil War. So you could go back and look at the 1832 map, and you see that Cumberland County is actually not there. So if your family had come to Cumberland County at that time, you would know that they settled either in White or Bledsoe or Morgan County. At one end of the lobby, there's a rare books room that you can visit and actually browse through priceless publications from around the world. Well, like this German Bible printed in the 16th century. I was looking through a stack of books and one of them was this volume, which is not so interesting from the outside, but on the inside it says, uh, 1834 speeches, Andrew Jackson, his book, not to be loaned. And um, I checked it, and it is an original Andrew Jackson signature. So not only does it have some value, but it's interesting to us because it came from Jackson's personal library. The building houses about 360,000 books and journals, in addition to countless government records, maps, and court case files. The Grand Reading Room is a comfortable space for historians and writers to do their work but it's also a popular attraction for genealogical investigation, a place where you can come discover your family roots. And it's really cool for us. It's, these are really hallelujah moments for us when we get to watch people's face light up when they find out something about somebody two or three or four generations before them that they'd only heard about but didn't really know much about. And we have had occasions where people were looking for a parent that they had never met or a, a family member who was lost who had been able to connect here and sometimes actually meet up here at the library. Actually about one-fourth of the collection is in library shelves. The rest can be stored in this one chamber thanks to a team of hard-working robots. It actually saved us from building over a hundred thousand more square feet and saving the taxpayers over 50 million dollars because we were able to shrink the space that the collection required and retrieve it by robots. Here's how it works. First, you sit down at one of the reading room's computers, find the book you're looking for in a catalog, and touch the request button. Upstairs, someone will turn your request into a command for one of the robots to retrieve the bin containing your book. By the way, this is the only state library to use a robotic retrieval system and its 8,400 bins can hold a half million books. Next, a worker will pull the requested book from the bin, 
send it downstairs in a dumb waiter, and in less than two minutes, here's your book. Well, thank you very much. That's all there is to it. The building houses a state-of-the-art conservation lab for restoration and treatment of books, photographs, and such. And for items damaged by water or insects, there's the blast freezer. Today set at minus 25 degrees. It's like the North Pole in Nashville. What the freezer really does is suspends the material and the damage until we have time to work on it and do proper conservation work. The building has classrooms for student groups and for training of the next generation of archivists. Shakespeare once said, there is history in all men's lives. Here men and women and kids can come explore their histories and just maybe discover some perception of tomorrow. We feel that every Tennessean has a story and our goal is to preserve as many of those stories as possible. And sometimes we're just preserving a little piece of a story in some record or document, but putting those pieces together using good research skills enables us to learn more about both the past, the present, and the future, because history does have a tendency to repeat itself.